So it's nine o'clock, so we'll just uh, make a start. OK, welcome everybody uh, to the first meeting in this session of the Public Audit Committee. Uh, under the standing orders, it's for the oldest mem member of the committee present to chair the first committee meeting until a convener is appointed. And unfortunately, that task falls to me. Uh, although I'm sure I'm one of the youngest, oldest members uh, doing this task uh, across the Parliament. Uh, can I welcome everybody uh, to the meeting uh, and say there are no apologies. Uh, we anticipate Jenny uh, catching up with us uh, later. So item one is a declaration of interest. And as you saw from the agenda, every member of the committee has to declare any relevant interests at this stage. And also if any items come up during the business of the committee in the months and years to come, uh, then again, it's, I would advise that you declare an interest and that prevents you getting into any kind of difficulty with our friends in the media. So I will kick off and say that I've got no relevant interest to declare. I also have no relevant interest to declare. I have no relevant interest to declare. I have no relevant interest to declare. Uh, I'm not sure that I have a relevant interest to declare, but just voluntarily and for good order, uh, I'm a director and 100% shareholder in my own business, Trinity Care Limited, a uh, member of the Law Society of England and Wales and the Law Society of Scotland and a landlord in Edinburgh. Okay. Monica? Um, I would draw to committee's attention that I'm a local authority councillor in South Lanarkshire. Okay. And that's it. And when Jenny comes, obviously we'll need to ask Jenny to declare any interest that she might have but I'll leave that up to the new convener to do that. Item two is the choice of convener. Uh, the procedure is already explained in paper two. The Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Labour Party are eligible for nomination as convener of this committee, and I invite members of the Scottish Labour Party to nominate a member from their party for the post of convener. I wish to nominate Jenny Mara. Okay. And I take it there are no other nominations. A seconder isn't required, so I therefore declare that Jenny Mara is uh, appointed as convener of this committee and congratulate her accordingly. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, and I'll hand over the chair to Thank Jenny. Good morning. Can I thank you, Alec, for taking the chair initially and thank uh, the committee and Parliament for your nomination as uh, convener. It's a great honour. The committee's uh, next task is to choose a deputy convener. The Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party are eligible for nomination as deputy convener of this committee. So I invite members of the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party to now nominate a member of their party for the post of Deputy Convener. I nominate Alison Harris. Thank you. And I take it there are no other nominations, so no. I think Alison Harris is duly uh, elected and appointed as Deputy Convener. Thank you very much indeed. I look forward to working with you, Alison, in the years to come. Now, the next item for consideration is item number four, which is the committee's work programme. With the summer recess fast approaching, we have time for just one more meeting before then on Thursday the 30th of June. The committee is invited to agree items of business for that meeting. There are a number of reports produced by the Auditor General for Scotland that were either published too late for our predecessor committee to consider them or have been published since. These are listed on your paper. It was the practice of the previous committee to receive briefings from the Auditor General for Scotland on the majority of her reports in advance of agreeing what, if any, further action to take. It will be, of course, for us to develop our own approaches in due course. In the meantime, I suggest that we might want to use the time on the 30th of June to receive briefings from the Auditor General for Scotland on two of these reports, that being the Common Agricultural Policy Futures Programme, an update, and the Changing Models of Health and Social Care, both which raise serious concerns. Now, are members content with this approach for our second meeting, or do members have any other suggestions? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Can I, at this point, uh, welcome Jenny Gilruth, MSP, who has just joined us to um, the committee. Um, 
we've all already declared our um, yeah. interests. Mm -hmm. Can I invite Jenny now to do so? I have none to declare other than those that are already declared in the public register. Okay, thank you very much. It's usual practice for committees at the start of the session to hold a business planning day uh, towards the end of summer recess to discuss their work programme, work practices and the legacy paper from the predecessor committee and also to receive any informal briefings. Are members content to hold a business planning day at the end of August or, or the start of September? And if so, are you content for the clerks to bring forward a draft programme for the business planning day to our next meeting and to contact you about possible dates? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Just one point, the convener, and that is that I think most of the parliamentary groups hold their own meeting round about the same time. So uh, could the clerks check with the representatives of the groups as well as the other committees, just to make sure if it, nobody has a clash? Yeah, I think that would be... So if the clerks could liaise with the business managers on that, that would be, that would be yeah. good. Thank you for that suggestion. That now brings uh, the first meeting, very short meeting, of the Public Audit uh, Committee to a close. Thank you. <laughs>